Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. Alright, so today we're going to be painting Morning Rise Railroad Tracks and I'm going to be sipping on some spiked seltzer. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. Alright, so for the materials today we're going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 canvas. You can get this at any of your local craft stores or you can order out a line. And of course you can switch up the size if you want. Um, I'm going to be using three brushes. I'm going to be using a half inch bristle brush. I'm going to be using a number 10 round brush and this is a number 2 round brush and of course you can switch those up but those are what I'm going to be using. I will be using acrylic paint today and the colors that I'm going to be using are titanium white, deep yellow, burnt umber which I will refer to as brown, this is Mars black, this is burnt sienna which I'll probably call rust, and this is a green oxide. And again, you can certainly switch up those colors, but that's what I'm gonna be using. You will also need a cup of water for washing your brushes and a paper towel for drying your brushes. And I'm going to be um, providing you with a downloadable image of the final painting. That'll be down in the description below, um, as well as text for each step. So you can print out the step-by-step -step instructions as well as the picture and you can use those as references as you go along through this painting process and that's all you're going to need. All right so what we're going to do for the first step is we are going to paint the sky. Um, I'm going to be using my bristle brush and I'm going to be using yellow and white paint. I'm going to be using mostly white but I will also use a touch of yellow on my brush at the same time. I want my sky to be just like a light yellow color. Um, and how I'm gonna determine where it's gonna go, I'm gonna come over from the top left, I'm gonna come into um, the top, maybe about a third of the way. I'm gonna make myself a little marker. And then I'm gonna come up about a third of the way from the bottom of my canvas and make myself a marker. And then I'm just gonna make myself a curved line and then I'm just going to color it in. Um, you can use circles, you can use left to right brush strokes, whatever works for you. This um, sky is in essence going to be kind of covered up by the time, um, not totally covered up, but you're going to have the edges are going to be filled with trees and the um, spot for the sun that's going to be covered up with a layer of white so if you don't have a perfectly executed um, brush stroke don't worry about it I like to paint the edges of my canvas as I go so if that way it looks nice and complete um, but you can have this kind of as light or as dark as you want the intensity of the yellow is really up to you um, and I'm not you don't really need much of a gradient here which is going from dark to light um, if you can get this area a little bit lighter, that's great. That's going to help with um, when you go to do that sunbeam later, but it's really not completely necessary. Um, so that's going to conclude that step. Um, we are going to use this brush for the next step, so you're going to want to wash it and dry it and get prepared for the next step. All right. What we're going to do for the next step, we are using our bristle brush. We're going to be painting the first layer of the ground. It's going to come up about a third of the way up your canvas. Um, and you don't really have to measure. If you just kind of eyeball where that halfway point is, just go a little bit below that, wherever you've ended that sky. I'm going to be using three colors. I'm going to be using white, black, and brown. And I'm going to be dotting You can just kind of go across. Doesn't have to be a perfectly executed line. When I go to reload my brush, I alternate what I'm picking up. So I just picked up, I started with all three colors on my brush. I started with black, white, and brown. And now when I go to reload my brush, I alternate my colors. So one time I'll pick up brown, the next time I'll pick up black, 
the next time I'll pick up white. And what'll happen is because I'm alternating my colors and I'm just really skipping around this area, it helps to give it a really nice textured look. Um, I don't over blend. I'm not dotting in one area a lot. Um, if I sit here and I continually dot in the same area, what'll happen is it'll all turn into one almost a solid color and I'm not going for that look right now I'm kind of going for like a gravel type look um, or um, like a dark sand um, this way it's going to add or provide for a really nice base underneath my railroad tracks and underneath um, there's going to be a little bit of foliage along the edge so this will really help to um, add a nice textured look to it. Again, I'm just kind of alternating the colors. You can get it as dark or as light as you want, but the three colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And then when I feel like I'm just about all set, I'm just kind of looking through and making sure I've got most of the spots covered. If you don't get it 100%, no worries. Um, you'll, you can cover it later. And that's going to conclude that step. I will be using the same brush for the next step, but you're going to have to wash it and dry it. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are doing a first layer for our forest. Um, the colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna use them in that order. I'm gonna start with black. I'm gonna start over on the right-hand side. I want this to go from dark to light. And when I get over by the sun, I'm gonna start putting treetops in there, almost like pine trees. And I'll show you what I mean when I get to there. But I'm gonna use the same dotting technique. So I'm just starting with black paint and I'm just dotting my canvas. I can hit my where my ground is. It's all right if you hit that. Um, I don't wash my brush. What I'm gonna do now that I've got a little section of black is now I'm just picking up some brown and you wanna make sure you overlap the sections so that way they look like they belong together. And what I mean by overlap is dot from one section into the other section. And that's gonna help to make these look like they're um, transitioning nice and naturally. And I'm gonna bring this pretty far over down here. I think I wanna touch more black here, make it nice and dark down at the bottom. And I'm gonna pick up some more brown and once I get about this much, I'm gonna start introducing the green. So I'm picking up brown and green at the same time on my brush. And again, I'm just kind of dotting. I wanna make sure that I'm overlapping into that brown section. And this paint, acrylic paint, will dry darker than it is when it's wet. So know that whatever it looks like when it's wet, especially when you're using these darker colors, it's gonna dry a, a deeper, darker color. So don't be alarmed if it looks a little bright um, or a little unnatural during this stage because once it starts to dry, my easel's making some tapping noises here, um, once it starts to dry, it will get a little bit darker. And I still have remnants of the brown and the black on my brush, which is why you're seeing these darker spots. That's perfect that's gonna allow for a really nice natural look. Bring in some of this still, I'm just picking up green, but I still have the remnants on my brush. Now I'm gonna start picking up yellow and green. And again, I'm gonna start overlapping these sections. So yellow and green. If you come to a point where you're trying to do this yellow and green, and it's really just black, it's still you still have a lot of black on your brush, then I would definitely recommend washing and drying your brush at that point because um, you do want it to get lighter and lighter as it comes and transitions over towards the sun. But if you're carrying on like I am and it's still looking pretty well, um, like it's transitioning fine, then no need to wash and dry your brush. Um, those remnants of the brown and the black the little remnants in your brush are gonna only add more of a natural look to it. So now I'm creeping in towards my um, sun area. So now I'm gonna start picking up yellow. 
I'm not picking up any white yet. I'm going to wait till I get really close to this to the sun area to start introducing some white. Um, I know that once I start introducing that white, it will um, start looking a little bit softer um, and I don't want it to get too soft looking. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of bringing this right to the edge of my skyline. And then once I have it all on here, and I do bring it all the way down to um, this corner here. Once I have that, now I'm gonna start making some little, the illusion of some trees. So I'm just kind of poking it up like a tall, maybe um, pine tree. Um, it doesn't have to be anything more than kind of just the illusion of a tall, almost a triangle. Um, and they can be different heights. You can have, you know, a shorter one here and then maybe a taller one here. And really all I'm just kind of doing is bringing it up in a kind of a light, um, airy triangle. Um, I did say that I was going to use some white. So right now I'm picking up a little bit of yellow and white and I'm just kind of lightly dotting this on there. So it starts to look like it's being kissed by the sun rays. We're gonna, we're gonna make this more dramatic later, but right now this is just to start the process. And then once you're done with this step, we are gonna move on to using um, the medium round brush that you have. So once you get this all nice and on, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out your number 10 round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, uh, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we are using our number 10 round brush. We are gonna be doing the first layer for the train tracks. We're gonna be using black paint only. A uh, couple of tricks for you before you get into this step. Um, at some point, you might want your brush nice and pointy. So in order to do that, what you can do is take your brush and spin it on the side of your palette in the paint, and that will make your brush nice and pointy. And another trick, is to add a touch of water to your black paint. That'll make it nice and fluid um, because you're gonna at some point wanna make some little skinny lines um, with your brush and that helps the process. So what I'm gonna do is I've got black paint on my brush. I'm gonna make three dots. The first one is gonna be right over here where the land meets the trees or the sky. That's gonna be my first dot. My second dot is going to be along the bottom edge of my canvas about a third of the way over. So I'm just going to, if this is my halfway point, I'm just going to come a little bit to the left of that, make myself a mark that I can see. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to make another mark that's going to be about halfway between my, where my ground meets my um, tree line and the bottom of my canvas. So right about here is where I'm gonna make that third mark. And now what I've gotta do is connect the dots. So I'm gonna do the shorter one first cause that one's gonna be easier for you to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect these in an arcing motion. I'm not gonna push hard because I want my line to be kinda of skinny at the top. I can always make it thicker at the bottom which I'm gonna instruct you how to do. But right now I'm just gonna use um, not a lot of pressure and I'm gonna do like an arcing motion to connect these two lines, or those two dots. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with this dot to connect to over here. I do want it to kind of have an arc to it, but it's really a long arc. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna almost go straight for a little while until I get maybe to about here, and then I'm gonna start my slow decline to that, um, to that opposing dot. So here I go, I'm starting right here. I'm going to kind of go straight for a little while. Straight, 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 straight. And at some point, when you start to curve, I recommend you keeping your eye on the prize, which is the other dot. And that's gonna help you to um, get it to be a, a nice, smooth, um, slow arcing motion. I'm gonna get my palette out of the way here so it doesn't prevent me from doing what I want. And that's gonna be my slow arc. And then what I'm gonna do now is I want the 
bottom or the parts that are closest to me on that track to be wider and this to be thinner. So now that I've got them in place, now what I can do is I want them to be pretty wide, the part that's gonna be closest to me, which is gonna be these two ends. So I start it really wide, maybe like an inch wide. And then what I'm gonna do is I want it to get more narrow as it goes farther away. And I'll, I'll color that in in a, in a minute, but this is how I'm gonna do this so you can see. And again, if you need to, you can add a little bit of water to your paint. That's gonna give you a smoother stroke. And then I'm gonna, again, oops, I had a lot of paint on my brush there, but that's okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with this one down here. So I want this to really be um, nice and thick at the bottom, or the part that's gonna be closest to us. So almost maybe an inch, inch and a half. You can push your brush a little bit harder as you're doing that. And then I want it to be thinner up here. So I want it to, I just added a little bit more paint to my brush. And now that I have that, those are the two um, tracks. Now I've got to do, I think they're called ties, which are the ones that are going across. And this gets a little bit tricky because you want them to stay horizontal. So I'm going to do my bottom one first. This is going to be the thickest one or the widest one. And you can, in essence, kind of watch the bottom of your canvas and you want it to go straight across. I suppose you could use a ruler if you wanted to, um, but I'm going to just kind of use my hand as a brace on my, um, on my easel here. And this keeps me pretty straight. I just ran through a little bit of wet brown paint, but I'm all right with that. And then once I get this first one, I can really just follow this all the way up and make them smaller. Oops, I just went through a little bit of wet white. That's okay. Make them smaller as they go up or more narrow. So here goes my next one. Your brain is going to want you to tilt these um, because you're going around a corner. So every now and again, if you just kind of, you can check yourself and say, okay, well, it's this high up on this side. Is it the same over here? And if it is, then you're, you're good. You're leaving it, you're keeping it nice and level. Um, so that's, that's probably the hardest part about this is keeping these railroad ties nice and level. Um, because again, our brain tells us Oh, you're going around a corner. Start to start to make them go at an angle, um, which we don't really want to happen. So here goes the next one, and this is where it gets pretty tricky because you again your brain wants you to to start turning them. And I'm gonna check my check my work in a second here because from where I'm standing, this looks a little like it's at an angle, but it could be an optical illusion from where I'm standing. So I'm gonna just check it. And this one's right to about here. And that one, I guess the bottom part. Hmm, it's a little crooked. Not too bad though. Okay, and then I'm just gonna keep going. Sorry, my head, my big head was probably in the way there. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do, and my, my line on my horizon is a little bit different too, so. And I'm going to try and get them a little bit thinner as they are going farther away. The water on your brush will help to make more fluid lines. I just add in a little bit more water to my, to my paint right now. And here we go. I'm going to do this. Long skinny one. And again, these, these upper ones are the tougher ones because they are, it's hard to keep your brain going left to right like this when you're working on an angled line. And again, if you can get them nice and skinny as you, as you go up, great. If not, no worries. We can, we can disguise it later. I think I want to make this one a little bit thicker. 
All right, so that's gonna be my railroad tracks. We are gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you get those on there, wash and dry that medium round brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is create our the illusion of tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my number 10 round brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. And I use them all three on my brush at the same time. And I am going to be going really fast. I'm gonna be doing kind of a light, um, gentle touch. I don't use a lot of paint, um, but I definitely have you know enough on the tip of my brush to allow me to make these marks. Um, I'm not concerned about this looking like a photograph. Um, I just really wanna give the illusion that there's these tree trunks and branches off in the distance in my forest. Um, and if you do any lines that you think are a little too big or clunky, just add a little bit of black onto them. And that's all I'm gonna do for that step. So when you're done with this, you, and of course, you don't want need them all super straight up. I do have some bending and crossing over one another as if there's branches back there. Um, so when you're done with this step, you can put this brush away in your water cup. We're gonna move on to the large bristle brush for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for this step, I'm using my bristle brush and I'm gonna finish my forest. And how I'm gonna do that is put leaves on these trees um, to give it a little bit more dimension. The colors that I'm gonna be using are green, yellow, white, and rust. Um, if you run into trouble, you could certainly use a little bit of the brown, but I think I'm gonna limit it to the rust just so it pops out a little bit more than the, um, than the tree trunks and stuff. So I'm gonna use the same thought process, which is dark over here, working my way to light, but I don't need to dot everything 100% like I did on the first round. This is just meant to give you um, like the little twinkly highlights to the leaves um, throughout, the, throughout the forest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with some green and yellow on my brush, and I'm gonna kind of just come over here and start to put these leaves coming off of some of these trees. Again, I don't need it to be really bright um, or have a bunch of it on there. This is just meant to kind of give you the illusion. Maybe there's maybe there's little bushes down at the bottom um, in the forest floor. So I'm alternating the rust, green, yellow, and I'm using white sparingly because I, I definitely want this side of the forest to be darker than over here. So I'm just kind of popping in some little specks of highlights. Um, I'm gonna go up here a little bit and maybe add some, you can use the side of your brush. Again, this is just meant to give this a little bit of dimension so you can see into the deep dark forest and you've got little pops of, of highlights on top, like these are maybe some tree tops or something. Um, and I'm gonna add a little bit coming over here. And again, it doesn't have to be the whole thing. I'm just really adding these highlights, so to speak, of some little bushes or shrubbery or trees that are that are poking out, peeking their heads out from the from the forest depths so they can see that sun shining on them and the sun is over here so my head goes to okay all of my leaves should be the lightest on the left um, but again you can kind of have fun with this if you want there to look like there's maybe a, a real big tree he up oh, top here poking out maybe you use more of the white yellow and rust just to give it a contrasting color um, you can have some brighter bunches of um, bushes and trees and stuff pump, poking out over here, maybe a little bit more solid of a green. So really have fun with this. Um, if, you if you have an area where you do want there to be a little bit more darkness, you can certainly go into that brown or the rust or the green and just kind of make a little shadowy area 
then go and grab some yellow and green and white and make a little bright area. If you feel like your brush is getting a little bit too muddled, like I feel my colors are kind of mushing together a little bit, you can always wash and dry the brush. Um, but my biggest goal here is to get this left side nice and light and bright. So I'm going yellow and white, and I really wanna make some bright areas over here to show that that sun that's peeking around that's you know starting to show its beautiful face for the day is illuminating all these nice little bushes and trees along the railroad track and again you can really get this to be have a lot of dimensional elements to it um, the sun rays are certainly going to help um, disguise any areas that you did that you're not totally excited about, um, but if you want there to be um, some nice light and brightness, just go f go in for that yellow and, and, the, and the white, and that's gonna help you to pop out these colors. But you can see I've got some light spots and some dark spots. This kind of shows that these areas um, have you know maybe some little trees and you know you can certainly have fun with this and spend a whole bunch of time on it but I think for me I'm gonna kind of call it um, and move on to the next step which is going to be with my medium round brush so when you get done getting as much excitement into your forest as you want which I sometimes have a hard time stopping um, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out the medium round brush. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step, we're using our medium round brush. We are putting the sunshine on our railroad tracks. So the colors that I'm gonna be using for that are rust, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna use rust and yellow first. And what I'm really doing is just kind of putting streaks on the top side of my, um, railroad ties. So this is the side that's closest to the sun. Um, I'm starting with the rust and the yellow and I will end up putting little streaks of white too, but this kind of keeps it on the safer side as you're doing this so you don't oops and put too much white on it. Um, but you can see I'm just kind of rubbing my brush left to right. I'm not concerned about it being um, perfectly executed because this is just the sun kissing the top of these um, railroad ties. And then I'm gonna do the same thing um, for the tracks themselves. I will put a little bit of white in a minute, but I'm, I'm just putting the orange or the um, rust and the yellow first. I do want it to be more intense over here. So when I go to do the um, the white, I will prob I'll put more over by where the sun is. But right now I'm just kind of concentrating on getting some nice streaks on here. And if you feel like you've gone too intense on it, just bring some of that black back. But be careful if you know if you're doing that with when you've already started the white, that will you know make it a little bit gray. So right now, I'm dipping my brush in yellow and white to get these really bright spots. And you can see I'm, I'm almost kind of just dusting my brush left to right. I'm really not pushing hard because I don't want there to be too much um, white. I don't want to overload it with white. I just want the little, little streaks of it so that way um, it again just kind of looks like the sun is touching the tips of it and it's giving you this nice bright illuminated look to it um, I'm getting it to be you know obviously a little bit brighter on the top side of it um, and I'm just gonna keep doing this until I feel like I've got enough of a um, representation of that sunshine hitting this. If I was not to use white, what would happen is as the rust and the yellow dry, they'd almost turn black because they're on top of the black 
um, surface, the, the first layer that we put. And that black um, would really show through because the yellow and the burnt sienna are going to be very translucent um, without the white in them. So that's why I'm definitely adding some white. And I'm going to just kind of put my head back here a little bit, see if I've got as much on here as I want. Of course, the brighter that you get the top of those tracks, the more it's going to look like the, the sun, that morning sun is highlighting them. So if you want it nice and, and bright and like, oh my God, that sun is going to be gorgeous today, then you can certainly put a lot of yellow and white at the top of these, um, of these tracks. But it's going to be a visual preference for you. Um, and I think that's going to do it for me on, oh, maybe I want a little bit here too, um, on this step. And then the next step, what we're going to be doing, we're going to use the, the large brush for the, the bristle brush for the next step. So when you get done getting your tracks all nice and kissed with some sunshine, well, want some more yellow here, um, you can put this brush away in your water cup and take out the large bristle brush for the next step. All right, so what we're doing for the next step is we're finishing the ground. So that's gonna be maybe some grass poking through and being highlighted by the sun over on this side and on this side. Um, and it's gonna give us a nice transition from the ground to the forest. Uh, the colors I'm gonna be using are brown, rust, green, yellow, and white. And I'm gonna be using my bristle brush. So I want this to be, I want to sh still have some of my ground, this um, black, brown, and white um, speckly stuff. I still want to have some of that showing. I really am trying to focus this in at the top side of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with brown. And this is just going to help me kind of start the, the process. So a little bit of brown. I'm going to do the same thing over on the right side. Then I'm going to touch my brush a little bit in the rust and I'm going to just kind of sprinkle in some of that. Maybe I put some in here if I feel like I've got some areas that I want there to be some of that color in through there. Now I'm dipping my brush a little bit into the green and you can see how I'm kind of getting this to go lighter as it goes up and you can certainly touch down below a little bit if you want to. So I've got some green going on now. And now I'm going into yellow and white. So I've got some yellow and white on my brush. A little yellow and white. I'm going to bring that maybe in front of the tracks a little bit, hiding that a little bit. As if this is maybe some grass or something that's overgrown over here. So yellow, green, and white is what I just dipped my brush into over here. So maybe this acts as some little pieces of grass and stuff or um, shrubs that have overgrown over by the forest edge. I think I'm going to put a little bit of rust in white. And I'm really just kind of having fun right now with these colors. Um, they can add that extra little pop of life down at the at the base of the the ground where it's meeting that forest area. Maybe a little bit of rust over here. And then I'm gonna go pretty heavy on my yellow and white right now. Because so I want this to be very evident that it's a different um, thing than the forest itself. I, I'm trying to get this to look like it's right along the edge of the um, railroad track. So if I can get it to have a contrasting color than what's behind it, that's going to help it really kind of pop out as something other than the forest. So that's why I'm really adding quite a bit of yellow and white right along this edge here. And if I wanted to, I could darken the area behind it too, but I think I think this is going to do it for me. And I'm just kind of sprouting up a couple of little pieces of, of grass along the edge in through here. That's going to, again, add a little bit more dimension to this. Um, and if you want, 
you know, you just kind of have fun with these over in through here, maybe a little more rust in yellow. And again, this is just kind of meant to give you one more step in the dimensional element of this. It puts the, the grass and the ground in front of that forest. So it just helps to add to the illusion of this. Um, maybe a little bit of rust yellow and white over here. Because I don't have any rust in my forest in this area, this can also help to tell the viewer that this is something different. All right, and then the next step, we're gonna be using this large brush. So when you get this ground all nice and complete, you can wash and dry this big brush for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna put in our sun rays, um, our sun and the rays that go across. I'm gonna use my bristle brush. I'm gonna be using white and yellow paint. Um, and how I'm going to do this is I'm going to start with my nucleus of my sun, which is going to be somewhere in this direction, and I'm going to be pulling the paint out. Um, some people like to do this with a dry brush technique, which means don't use a lot of paint and you're almost kind of rubbing it across your canvas. Other people like to do it with a touch of water, and that will sometimes help it glide across the, the surface. Um, the, the benefit, or the downfall, I should say, to the dry brush is you might have um, it looking unfinished. The downfall to using water is you might lift the paint right off the canvas. So what I recommend you do is maybe practice on a piece of paper or on, um, on, on the back of this canvas or something. So that way you can see which method that you like better. Um, I'm gonna just start with, I'm gonna start with it a dry brush technique so you can see that. And then um, if I feel like I want to smooth it out a little bit, I can add a little bit of water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with just white paint on my brush, and you do not need a lot. The, the trick to this is less is more. So you don't need a lot of paint. I'm gonna decide where I want the nucleus of my sun to go. So that's gonna be somewhere in through here. And you'll see if you had a darker sky um, than I do, you'll see this white pop out even more. Once you get the nucleus, that's where all of your sun rays are gonna come from. So I'm gonna have white on my brush, I don't have a lot. Every single sun ray is gonna come right from this center. So I'm gonna start up here just so I can kind of get the idea of how I want this to work. And I'm very lightly touching my canvas. So this way I'm not running the risk of um, it too thick and too um, abrasive looking. And I'm using kind of more just a, a drier brush technique right now so you can still see through um, the paint. And I probably should have mentioned, you should make sure that your, your underpainting is all dry before you do this step too. Um, so that way you're not streaking through, like I just got some rust color on that. Um, that was because I have a very dirty palette right now. So I just reload a little bit more white. And I'm just kind of using a dry type brush technique here. And I'm going right on top of my railroad tracks. And I've got them kind of all laid out where you can see I've got them going pretty far away. Not this one over here too. And you can hear how dry my brush is right now. And I want a touch of yellow in it so I just picked up a little bit of white and yellow. I want some yellow coming over here too. So you can see I'm just kind of really hardly touching my canvas. And you'll see when you do it yourself um, if you like the, the dry look to it. You can touch your brush a little bit in the water, which is what I'm doing right now, just so you can kind of see you could go back with a touch of water and smooth it out a little bit but the water again will um, 
if you don't practice it, what will happen is you may just, if you're pushing too hard or you have too much water, you'll pull that paint right off and you'll end up with like outlines of the sun ray, which is not, not necessarily the best thing to do. Um, and once you have it as much as you want, I think that looks really pretty right now. So I'm going to say my sun rays are done. Um, maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> All right, I think that's pretty. So you have one less step, step to do, and it's gonna be with your small brush. So when you get done doing your sun rays, you can put the big brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step, which is the final step in any painting, um, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna sign mine in the bottom left. You can sign yours in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm using my small number two brush and I'm using black paint. I'm gonna sign mine with my initials, but you could sign yours with your full name or your first name or the date or whatever floats your boat is fine by me. Uh, and that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you love your painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.